Welcome back to News Talk. Joining us now here in the studio, Hank Stawinski. He was just sworn in as the Chief of Police in Prince George's County. Also with us, Assistant Chief Hector Velez. Welcome to you both. Thank you very much for your time. Great having you here. I feel very safe. Thank you for having us. Excellent having both of you here. And Chief, congratulations. Thank you. You talked in really interesting and moving terms last time you were here about your upbringing in the county, being in a law enforcement uh, family, and your career coming up through the ranks of the Prince George's County Police Force. Uh, curious to ask, what was it like when you were confirmed? I know it was an honor to be nominated, to be selected by the executive to be the next police chief in Prince George's, but when the vote came, not that there was any real drama about the outcome, but uh, given your background, how did it feel? Well, it was overwhelming, the support that I was receiving from the community the calls that I was getting to be unanimously confirmed by our county council after being nominated by the county executive. It, it's a humbling experience. I appreciate their confidence in me. And to, to be now the 17th chief of the family business, as I refer to it, it's, uh, it's a real privilege. And I'm, I'm pleased to have the new assistant, Chief Hector Velez, with me this morning. Um, and we're working very hard to continue the crime reductions and to chart a course forward. Any chief relies on his team. What does it mean for you, uh, Assistant Chief Velez, to be in the upper command at the highest, basically, uh, ranks of the department, helping uh, folks on the front line, interacting with the community, uh, maybe some political uh, as well? What does it mean to you to have this opportunity now? It's a huge honor. And I will say that I've known Chief Stowinski for a number of years. And he is the right man for the job at the right time. Uh, I support him 100% um, to, for him to have asked me to be his assistant. Uh, it, it's, it, it is a great honor. Um, I, you know, my passion is, is the community, reaching out to the community, uh, being involved with the officers, and we look, at, look forward to doing more of that. Reaching out to the community is part of our uh, mission here as well. So let me open up the phone lines. Uh, we'll be talking ultimately f uh, with these guests for two segments. So ample opportunity for you to dial in with questions, comments, or suggestions. Our number here on News Talk, 703-387-1020. We encourage your calls. We'll go to the phones as your calls come in. Those of you watching in the 11 a.m. hour can participate in the show. We uh, sincerely hope that you do. Phone lines open now, 703-387-1020 uh, being our number here. Will you have at all uh, a, a special uh, portfolio of responsibility, Chief Velez, or basically if it's something the department is involved in, uh, you'll have a piece of, of that? Uh, currently, I oversee the Fiscal Management Division and the Police Department and the Internal Affairs Division. Uh, in addition to that, I also work closely with the Deputy Chiefs that oversee the four divisions, the four bureaus, just to make sure that they have the resources they need to accomplish their tasks. Going from acting chief to the man, the man who's been uh, not just uh, nominated but confirmed by the council, the both steps of the two-step process, what does it mean for you in terms of planning, uh, policy, innovation, uh, any aspect of, uh, of the department that you can now put your stamp on, what happens as the result of you being fully and firmly in charge? Well, what we've begun as a first step towards that is we've reorganized our entire crime meeting around innovation and around strategy. So for a long time we've reviewed crime and it's been a productive conversation, but the focus now is looking over the horizon, looking at what may be, what may be the next developing issue in any particular part of the county and then continuing that management of the department in real time. And I'm very excited about that. Also, just continuing the good work we've been doing in terms of being a proactive, not a reactive police department, a strategy-based police department, where having information, passing that information out into the field in real time, and moving as crime trends are moving to ensure that we make the community safe, that we, if we have a group of offenders moving through the community doing a number of things, we're able to intervene early and prevent further crimes from happening. Before we go any farther, I want to ask you to uh, offer some thoughts about the Prince William County police officer who so tragically died on her first day on the job. A woman who had served her country in the military, coming home to serve her community wearing a uniform similar to yours. I don't know that I've ever heard something quite so uniquely heartbreaking as an officer going through the, the entire process becoming a member of the Prince William Force and, and, and having that uh, being shot to death in a domestic situation on day one. Your thoughts? 
any time a police officer is lost on the line of duty, it's devastating. But to have a, a, an individual such as Officer Gwendon with so much promise and potential, her distinguishing herself in her military service, choosing to serve the community in Prince William as a police officer, and then to have one single shift and then to lose her, I know that the Prince William County Police Department is hurting, but we also have to be cognizant of the injured officers, Officer McGowan, and Officer Hempen. We, we are wishing them and praying for their speedy recovery. And I was at the funeral yesterday with the senior executive command staff and a number of our officers who also went. Um, it's devastating because of the great potential she had. And now we won't be able to realize that potential in policing because she's been taken from us far too early. Um, and any time we lose an officer, it's tragic. But you're right, to lose someone in their first shift, a goal that they had sought for years to achieve, to be there, and then to, to have it turn out that way. And I know the chief is, uh, is leading them effectively, but uh, our thoughts and prayers are with them. A brief, we have a break in a, in a moment. Uh, chief Velez, but a brief thought on that from you. As uh, Chief Stowinski said, it, it is a tragedy, uh, but unfortunately serves as a reminder uh, to our fellow officers and to the community that when we go out and do our job and we put our uniforms on, uh, any day at any time can be that time when you're faced with a deadly situation. And uh, that's something that officers do think about and carry on throughout their shift. So, Families too, families, families friends and loved ones of everyone who wears the, the badge. Uh, it's it's there in the front of the mind or the back of the That's mind correct. each and every day. Yes. Uh, Chief Stowinski, Assistant Chief Fellows, stand by for just a moment. We'll take a break. More of our conversation with these special guests on air and online, News8NewsTalk.com, our blog. A break. Back with more after this.